Hello and welcome to ATI 4205 Applied Logistics. This session will address the different methods used to select a facility location. The selection will be based on some weighted factors and mathematical calculations. The ranking and total scores will be used to select the most efficient and effective location. The session will review some of the methods used in location selection. Other methods will be mentioned but will not be explained or used in the selection of a location in this course. Um, uh, mostly it will be complex and it will use mathematical models, programming mathematical models that uh, are not uh, on this level or uh, explained uh, at this level. The methods of selecting warehouse location are factor rating method, the break even or cost analysis, uh, center of gravity method, and the transportation model which uses linear programming. And that's one of the uh, things that we said uh, that we are not going to use. So transportation model, we are going to mention that, but we are not going to go through the calculation of finding the um, uh, y factor or the uh, x variables that will affect the um, transportation or the logistics. Uh, and in some cases actually it might not be linear programming, um, we might uh, need to use nonlinear programming to, due to the nature of the involved factors. So as I stated, the transportation model and the nonlinear programming will not be explained um, in this course. It can be explained in upper uh, courses in like master's uh, degree or um, a PhD degree uh, level. The first method is the factor rating method, which is considered the most used method because a, wi because, uh, a wide variety of the factors can be included in the analysis. Um, there are six uh, steps uh, in this method. The first step is to identify relevant critical or uh, success factors uh, which will assist in the success of the business. Uh, weight will be assigned to each factor. Then a scale will be developed for each factor. The scores of each location for each factor will be provided by historical data and published indexes. Uh, then we multiply the score by the weight of each factor uh, for each location. The recommended uh, location or we recommend the location uh, with the highest point score. So we add all the points for each location and then uh, based on the highest score we can recommend that location. To understand the factor rating method, let us look at the example of selecting a location for the company's facility in one of two countries, France and Norway. The critical factors have been identified and the weight has been assigned to each factor based on the company's mission. In addition, the score of each factor uh, at each location has been determined by the European Trade Commission. For example, there is a, like a, an index or a table that measures uh, those factors in each country. So to calculate the weighted scores, we multiply uh, the uh, weight of each factor by the score of each factor uh, at each location. Uh, as you can see here for the first one, you can see that the weight is 0.25 and the score for France is 70. So the score for the weighted score for France will be 0.25 times 70, which is equal to 17.5, while for Norway it's 15 uh, points. Um, then we add all the scores. So if we add the 17.5 plus 2.5 plus 8.5, 29.3 and 12.6, the total score will be 70.4. Based on the calculations, uh, we can see that France um, as a location has higher score than uh, Norway. Um, thus, uh, France will be selected as the recommended location for the company's facility. The second method, uh, we are going to use the cost volume analysis or the break-even uh, analysis. Uh, 
this method is usually used for industrial locations such as manufacturing facilities or processing distribution centers. Uh, there are three steps uh, in this method. In the first step, we determine fixed and variable costs of each location. In the second step, we plot the cost of, uh, for each location. And in the last step, uh, we select the location with the lowest total cost of expected production volume. The example in this slide uh, explains uh, the break-even analysis or the cost analysis uh, through selecting a location out of three by comparing the total cost of each location. In the last method, we selected the location with the highest score. Remember that. That was uh, when we selected France, it was the one with the highest score or points. While in this method, we are going to select the location with the lowest cost. Lowest cost. So remember that. The fixed cost and the variable cost per unit are being provided with selling price of $120 and expected volume of 2,000 units the total cost will be equal fixed cost for each location plus the variable cost per unit multiplied by, by the volume. The location with the lowest cost will be selected. We can confirm our calculations through graphing the total cost versus the number of units produced. So if the number of units produced was less than a thousand, if it was less than a thousand, you can see that the curve for Akron will be selected. So Akron as a city will be selected. Um, if the number uh, of units between 1,000 and 2,500, and this is what we have, we have 2,000 units, then Bowling Green will be selected. And if more than 2,500 units, uh, Chicago will be selected. The third method is called the center of gravity, uh, which finds a uh, location of distribution center uh, that minimizes distribution costs. Uh, this method considers location of markets, uh, volume of goods shipped to those markets, and the shipping cost or distance um, between the distribution center and the different markets or uh, different uh, places. It could be a supplier, it could be a market. Uh, so in this method, we uh, place the existing locations on a coordinate grid like XY grid. The grid origin and scale is arbitrary. So you can select any um, origin as long as you include all the points or all the cities uh, in that um, grid. Uh, but we need also to maintain relative distances between the cities. So it should be uh, more of like closer to uh, a real distance or scaled distance between these cities or the locations. Then we calculate the x-y uh, coordinate for center of gravity uh, that cost uh, is uh, assuming that cost is directly proportional to distance and volume uh, shipped. The calculation of the coordinates will be through the uh, formula or the two formulas for X and Y provided in this slide, knowing that uh, DIX is the X coordinate of, for, uh, of uh, location I, while uh, DIY is the uh, Y coordinate of location I, and QI is the quantity of goods moved uh, from uh, or um, out of uh, that location, from uh, or to that location. The following is an example of center of gravity calculations. The coordinates X and Y for each city is given as shown in the grid. So we have an example, we have the four cities, uh, we have Chicago, we have New York, we have Pittsburgh, and we have Atlanta, and the X, Y coordinate for each one of these cities is given as you can see. So we can select an arbitrary um, origin. Um, and all values of X and Y were based on that origin. All these values that you see for these cities are based on that origin. Um, 
The table on this slide shows the store location and the number of containers shipped per month from each location. Using the formula of xy uh, coordinates, the center of gravity will be calculated and the xy value will be identified. And as uh, we said before, we have to multiply the x, uh, y, the, um, all the x's and all the y's with the number of units that will be moved. And uh, we need to consider the um, uh, cost for uh, these units. So based on the number of units or based on the uh, containers shipped, um, we can uh, calculate the x and y and those are the values that we get. For the x coordinate, it will equal 60, uh, to 66.7, while for the y coordinate, y coordinate will equal 93.3. We can go back to the grid and we can identify the location for the center of gravity on the map or on the grid uh, where we need to uh, either build or lease the required facility. So we can, uh, as recommended, we can lease or build uh, in this area. Now, it doesn't have to be the exact X and Y coordinate, but it can be within uh, that area of uh, or that city uh, as close as possible to the highway and roads. Um, in some cases, you might find a body of water or um, swamps or um, maybe a um, uh, forest or something, so you'll not be able to uh, build uh, something in that area. But in, in other cases, um, um, it might be clear. So if it's clear, yes. If it's not, then you have to uh, just move it a little bit around that area uh, just to be within that center of uh, gravity uh, dimensions. So for more complex location selection uh, and uh, we have more factors that will be involved and then um, uh, we have um, uh, linear relation between the different factors at that point uh, the uh, transportation model should be used. Uh, the model finds amounts uh, to be shipped from several points of supply uh, to several points of demand and the solution will be to minimize total warehousing and shipping cost and that will be the main objective of the formula. Uh, and to solve such a problem, we use a special class of linear programming. This map shows the worldwide uh, distribution of uh, Volkswagens, uh, the cars and parts. Uh, each location was selected using uh, the, uh, an advanced programming model uh, to ensure the efficiency and effectiveness of the distribution process. As engineers, we ask additional questions to make sure of the efficient flow of material and information with the logistical um, system. For example, we need to identify the number of warehouses needed and what size uh, uh, one, uh, once selected customers will be assigned to be served by certain locations based on proximity. So we can assign the warehouse that will serve the uh, customers in that location. We can also identify the products that should be st stocked in each warehouse. Then define which products should be shipped directly from the plants uh, or the vendors or ports to customers. So we can ship it directly from the, uh, the plant, um, from the manufacturing facility or from the vendor or uh, we can ship it directly from the port to the customer. The number of required warehouses will affect company's operation and uh, per unit cost. The fewer the warehouses, uh, the less overhead cost, less safety stock inventory and easier to manage. Stacking more products in one warehouse could support the decision of uh, automating most of the processes in that warehouse, in addition to the ability to negotiate if you want to buy uh, more items uh, from that product with the uh, uh, scale uh, of um, purchase. That will be all for this session. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, thank you and have a great day.